This is Xavier Alfaro, and you're now listening to the Line for Line podcast. Shout out T-Rat, tricking your savvy. Know they coming if I send on the Addy. See, we just living by the code, no gap. Yeah. It's more than a podcast. It's a life hack for a lost soul that was on the verge. Trying to figure how to get their life back real tough. <laughs> See, you got a voice on this podcast. You can be you on this podcast. Educate all the youth on this podcast. Elevate me and you on this podcast. That's the reason we here, okay? It's family and friends, okay? Be real, you ain't got to pretend, okay? All right, and just like that, we're back in another episode of Line for Line. We have a very special guest in the building. I'll go ahead and let him introduce himself. I'm Xavier Alfaro. I go to Trumper High School and I play hockey for the Kenosha Comets. Yes, sir. So, of course, before we get ready to get started, just go ahead and tell the fans on YouTube just a little bit about you, maybe where you grew up, Mm -hmm. things that you enjoyed growing up, just things like that. So, me, um, I grew up here in Kenosha. I moved here when I was around three. Mm-hmm. I stayed in Illinois for high school, for middle school. Wait, 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 everything. wait. Illinois. Does yes. that mean you're a Bears fan? Yes. Let's go. Let's go. I'm a uh, diehard Bears fan. Continue Bears, on. Bears, Bulls. <laughs> Cubs? Cubs. Yes. Yes. And Blackhawks have all been. Let's that's go. That's been me. Let's go. Sorry to interrupt. I just had to <laughs> check just before we get started. Yeah. Continue on with your story. Um, My family still all lives out there, so a lot of what I do is more in Illinois, mm-hmm. but we've been up here for about three years since i was three years old so pretty relative up here but i just started going up to school up here in high school nice what was it like for you back then growing up in kenosha the transition from illinois to coming to packer land where you're just surrounded <laughs> by green and gold it was really weird because i when i would go to school it would be all everyone likes the same teams i come up here and i see the rogers jerseys all over mm-hmm. and me i'm just like i look over and it's kind of weird but yeah it's something to get used to, yes, sir. for sure. How did you get into hockey? Hockey is a pretty... So, hockey, um, actually, I was, I was like two years old, and my parents and one of my dad's coworkers were watching a movie, mm-hmm. and I walked in the room when they were watching it, and I was like, I want to do that. And my dad's like, fight people, because they were fighting on the this, <laughs> this screen. I was like, no, I want to go. I want to skate. And my dad's coworker told them the next day that they had signed me up to go ice skate and it just took off from there no way yeah so just tell us a little bit about the process of what it was like getting started because obviously you said you were two i was two when i started and, skating and obviously you didn't know how to skate they had a teacher and everything like yeah. that what was that process like it was it was really it's not that vivid to me because i was so young mm-hmm. all i can remember is i i started at the rexplex so i started there and it's just slow and I start, slowly started picking up hockey around three, four, and five. Mm-hmm. And I just slowly kept, like, picking it up from there. And then it just, that's all I can remember is just, like, baby steps from there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. So what were some of the valuable lessons that you were able to learn from hockey at such a young age that you continue to implement into your life now? So for me, the one thing I've always learned is you got to, everyone has a voice in hockey. Mm-hmm. Out there, one of the big things is just communication. The more you talk to others, the more you grow as a team. Mm -hmm. So for me, the one thing I've always tried to do was be more of a leader, be vocal, just try to be that person even when nobody else wants to be. Yeah. Now, what position is it that you do play when you're out there on the ice? Me, I mainly play center. There's, there's, I want to say four positions, four or five positions. There's the center, there's the left wing, right wing, and then there's defensemen. And Mm -hmm. then, of course, we have a goalie. Normally, I play center, but I can also hop back and play defense. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So how how is it that you go about being the guy when you're playing center so the center it's kind of like it's kind of like lacrosse where you have like a midfield an attack and and a defense Mm -hmm. so a center he's not only playing offense but he's playing defense at the same time he's supposed to be the third guy on offense and third guy on defense Mm -hmm. so it's more of just an all-round role and the more that for me personally the more that I don't think about how big of that role is the better I get done Nice. Doing my work. Nice, nice. Mm-hmm. Now, what grade is it that you're in this year? I'm a senior this year. You're a senior this mm-hmm. year. So, will this be your last year playing hockey? It will be. Oh no! So yeah. no college. There's no college hockey that you're going to go. So to? the difference about like, for mo- so how do I explain this? So most sports, you know how you can go to a college and you can walk on anywhere. Mm-hmm. If if you don't get a scholarship, you can just walk on. So for hockey. What you have to do is you have to, after high school, you have to go play juniors. Mm -hmm. So you have to go and house with someone if you get offered by anyone. So, like, for example, I got offered by a couple teams in Michigan. Oh, nice. And they asked if I could come out a couple years ago. And 
basically how it goes with it. I'd have to play two to four years over there before I can even get looked at by colleges. No way. So after then, if, I, if I'm still physically capable of playing, then the colleges can reach out, and then they can, they can eventually work something out. So most hockey players are normally 21, 22 when they get into college as freshmen. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it's kind of hard to get to there, especially with all the added years added on. Nice, sir. Mm -hmm. So that's maybe just something that you may not be interested in? or No, but I definitely want to stick around sports after I'm done, though, for sure. Coaching, training, something like that. There you go. There's always mm -hmm. room for opportunities. Huh? Yeah. Nice. So just tell us a little bit about the program that you are involved in, because it's, it's been brought to my knowledge that the actual high schools here in Kenosha, they don't actually have hockey teams. Yeah. So you have to go somewhere else and play. Just tell us a little bit about that. So for there is a high school team, technically. But it's all of the Kenosha high schools combined, so it's uh, Tremper, Bradford, Indian Trail. I know Central High School is in there, too, and I think there's another high school in there. So they all combine for one team, and mm -hmm. that's where they play. For me, I play outside of the high schools, and I play travel at the Kenosha Comets. And we, like in the past years, we've done, like, prospect showcases, and we've done other different things, mm -hmm. while the high school stays more centered towards just the in-state stuff. Nice. Now, who are some of the coaches over there that keep you prepped for hockey over there at the Comets? Me, over the years, I've I've actually only had a couple of coaches. I ha For most of my years, I had a, a coach named Steve Pelly. Mm -hmm. He had me since I was, like, wee little, and he helped, like, develop me as I got older. My freshman year is when my second coach actually came in, and he first started as an assistant coach. His name is Andrew Cloutwitter. And what he did was he came in as his first year. He, he's the one who actually transitioned me back from center to defense because our team was at a different point and we needed different people at different spots. So he asked my other coach if we could move me back, and he's like, well, I mean, I guess. I don't see how, <laughs> how well that's going to go. And I learned a whole new position in probably two months that I've never played before in my life. Yeah. And it was – so he came in and did that, and I've had him for the past three years. So – here it's just been like more I'm getting used to new body types with new people just growing as a team in general and he's really helped me just go along that process i see i see what would you say has been definitely the hardest part of being committed to hockey and playing hockey for me so hockey's got a really long schedule we start back up around august and we have our tryouts in august and we end normally in the middle of march so it's all winter and even in the, some of those summer months. Mm -hmm. So we start very early. And since it's all contact, it's like playing a football season. But instead of playing football, it's like two more seasons added on to that mm -hmm. with the time schedule. Because we'll normally play about 60, 70 games. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so it, gets, it, it all adds up. So me not being a bigger person, I'm only 5'6". <laughs> and most of these kids that I've seen over the years are over 6 feet. So it adds up. So definitely the physical aspect to it, but the amount of games of that physicality definitely adds up. What would be that piece of motivation that you would give to the young man who wants to pursue a career or just play hockey? What is What should he be looking forward to? He's got to look forward to good times and good memories because most of my memories from hockey – were made off the ice mm -hmm. so, like me we were always traveling so we were always in hotels with kids i was playing we were playing knee hot and we were playing a game called shinny where we'd play hockey on our knees with little nets in the hotel hallways and we'd get yelled at oh really so like this like most memories that i have are made off the ice mm -hmm. so it's just everything that comes with the sport in general yes sir now i know she said that if you don't continue to play you obviously still want to be involved with it whether mm -hmm. that's coaching, whatever like that, what type of person do you think you would be for the up-and-coming players? For me, I personally, I'm going to go to college for exercise science and kinesiology, mm -hmm. so I want to definitely get into that field so I can be a trainer, I can be a coach, I can be helpful with nutrition and everything. So I would definitely want to stay along the sports path because sports have always been a big part of my life, and I want to keep that in my life. Yes, sir. Now, as we get ready to close out an amazing episode, mm -hmm. is there anyone out there that you would like to give a shout-out to? Maybe someone who helped you along the way, maybe your best friends who are watching, whatever the case may be. Man, this is tough because there's always someone who you forget to leave then to leave out. But for sure, first I got to thank God because nothing's, nothing's possible without God, Amen. for sure. And then second of all, it's just my friends and family for sure because – for me, friends are family because we all go through the road together. Mm -hmm. So I consider everybody in that whole just like 
they're my motivation. So, who else? Man, all my coaches, because in the end, they don't coach. Those coaches help develop me not only to be a, the player that I am, but also help to become the person that I am off the ice. So, that definitely is one of the most like thankful things I can be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That being said, young man, we just wrapped up an amazing episode of Lime Flying. We appreciate you for having the time to stop by. Thank you. You calling or you listening? Tune in every week. Lime Flying. Oh yeah, I'm going Lime Flying.